that we are alive, but it is because of the grace of God that we are still alive. A, a week or so, there was a wedding in one of the districts back home, and a certain family went to a wedding where Adventist young people were wedded, were getting married. When they were on their way home, it was a man, a wife, and their three kids, and the mother-in-law. They got an accident. And the, the man and his three kids and the mother-in-law perished in the road accident. And it came out of the newspapers. Now, like I said yesterday, that the Bible says, the living know that they shall die. 
Now, the Bible does not say only those who are not Adventists will die. But the Bible says the living, all of us who are here have an appointment with death. Now, one man, I greeted one man one day and I asked him, how are you? And said, Pastor, my funeral has been postponed. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was really funny. I also laughed. But in a true sense, all of us who are sitting here, our funeral has been postponed. Oh, yes. And we are not sure where we will be next year around this time. Around this time, Maybe some would be in hospital sick. Maybe some would have long been buried. But one thing that we know is that life, when it is not covered by Jesus, it is not safe to be a life that is worth living. Make a right decision to walk with Jesus so that when you have taken that decision, you would know that it is good to walk with the Lord. We are reading this morning from the book of Matthew, chapter 15. Reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 15. Let me underscore this and say that I have been blessed by all the men of God that stood up here and proclaimed the word of God. How, how many of you are saying we are also blessed through this? And I discovered that I've got a gift of tongues that I could hear all what the brothers are saying in the name of Jesus. <laughs> So if you don't believe that the gift of tongues is there in the Adventist church, come to Pastor Muiva, then I will tell you that it is there. <laughs> we are reading from the book of Matthew chapter 15 from verse 21. The Bible reads as follows, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Ty and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out, to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and asked him saying, send her away for she cries after us. But he said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, Oh, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. I must tell Jesus. Let us pray. Our Lord, we pray that you help us. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In a certain village, there was a king. This king had an advisor. In a vernacular culture where I am a pastor, a right-hand man of the chief is called Bahoma. Every time the chief would go, he would always be with this man that is called Bahoma. And Bahoma is a man that is expected to die with the king. In a Zulu culture, when the kings were, were, were buried, they would kill some people to be buried with the king. Yes. So Bahoma is a man that ought to be buried with the king. He is not only an advisor, but he is also his predecessor to death. And it happened one day that they were in the bush going there to hunt. As they were hunting, a lion came by. As a lion came, Bahoma was the first man to run away in the name of Jesus. He ran as fast as he could. And the king, in an event to try to protect himself against the lion, he lost his finger. And every time when the king would speak to this Bahoma, this right-hand man, he would always say, God is good. Uh, is, <laughs> Bahoma would always say, God is good. Every time when the king speaks, this guy would always shout and say, God is good. 
Now, and he came back and told Bakoma that the lion attacked me and I lost my finger. And Bakoma said, God is good. And the king got angry and said, how can you say God is good when I have lost my finger? And he, the king took Bakoma and imprisoned Bakoma because of saying God is good when the king has lost his finger. It happened one day that the king got bored again and went to the bush. Remember this time that Bakoma is not there. Bakoma is in prison. And, and when the king was hunting, there was a certain tribe that practiced what is called cannibalism, a, 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 a ritual of human flesh eating. They would sacrifice human beings and eat their flesh. And when they were about to sacrifice the king, they discovered that the king does not have a finger. And their law was saying that you do not sacrifice an incomplete sacrifice. <laughs> Therefore, the king was saved because he was incomplete. Remember, he lost his finger. Amen. And he remembered Bakoma in jail and went to Bakoma and told Bakoma what has happened. And he asked Bakoma, Bakoma, are you angry at me? And Bakoma says, I am not angry at you, O king, because if I did not <coughs> run away, the lion was going to eat me. And if you did not imprison me, I was going to be the one to be sacrificed because I've got all my fingers with me. Therefore, the Lord is good. I want us to know in all circumstances of life, the Lord is good. When you are sick, the Lord is good. When you lose your job, the Lord is good. When you have nothing in your table, the Lord is good. The goodness of the Lord is not tested by what he does. He is good when he does not do anything. He remains good simply because he is who? He is God. The Bible says Jesus departed to a region of Ty and Sidon. Let me say something to you again. That the, 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 the gospel of Matthew, Matthew's intention is to try to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. The difference between Luke and Mark and John is that Matthew begins the story of Jesus from his genealogy. He starts tracing Jesus from Abraham. In the same book of Matthew, we find Jesus saying, before Abraham was, I was. Amen. Amen. Now, this means to us that Jesus is older than Abraham in eternity, and Abraham is older than Jesus in history. Because Abraham existed in history before the existence of Jesus. But history does not exist when Jesus, who is history, is not there. Amen. Therefore, Abraham exists because Jesus is, and Jesus is the Lord. Whilst Matthew, when he writes his book, Matthew therefore proves that Jesus is not only a human, just a human being, but Jesus is the Messiah. He says now in the book of Matthew chapter 15, Jesus departed to the region of Ty and Sidon. Ty and Sidon was 30 to 50 kilometers away from Galilee. And a Canaanite woman came. Now it's interesting that the Bible does not tell us her name, but it tells us where she's coming from. And the Bible does not only tell us where she's coming from, but it tells us her problem. There are times when you are a child of God, people will not know your name, but they will know you with the problem that you have. There are times some of us are not known by our surnames, but we are known by our behavior. The woman of Canaan, now, we know that Canaanites are a result of an incest relationship between Lot and his children. When Lot was taken out of, 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 of Sodom, Sodom was not taken out of his children. When they were delivered, they carried Sodom with them. As a result, the Canaanites become the offspring of Lot's relationship with his own children. And now the Jews did not like Canaanites. In chapter 10 of Matthew, Jesus gives them instruction. He says, go ye therefore, cast the demons, heal the sick, and he gives them an instruction. He says, 
Do not to go into the land of the Gentiles, but to go into the lost of the house of Israel. Now I want you to ask, I want to ask you a question. What do you do when a movement of what seems not to be directed to you? This woman wanted help, but the help seems not to be directed to the Gentiles. Help seems to be directed to those of the house of Israel. There are times when we pray for a job, instead of you being employed, your friend comes and tells you that she has gotten employed. There are times when you pray for your sick mother, instead of her getting healed, someone's mother gets healed. What do you do when you are struggling with meds and someone tells you that she has passed or he has passed meds? There are times at school when I had a serious problem with accounting, when every brother would come and tell me that we have passed accounting. I knew that in accounting I only knew five things. I would get to five while others are getting high marks. What do you do when the movement of God seems not to be directed to you? This woman of Canaan had that there is a man called Jesus. The Bible says, the spirit of prophecy in the book is out of ages. Mother White says, this lady tried a lot of solutions from a lot of people, even in her own nation. As a result, instead of the problem going away, the problem became worse. What do you do when you are seeking for solutions? And instead of you getting solutions, the problems get even tighter and more tough. This woman heard that there is a man called Jesus. He heard that the blind, they see. The, the lame, they walk. Those of leprosy, they get healed. And he said in her heart, I must at least tell Jesus. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that when you want to tell Jesus, there is no protocol that you have to pass through when you come to see Jesus. There is no appointment that you place when you come to see Jesus. He's got the whole world in, in his hands. He runs, he makes sure that six billion people in the globe are alive. He is busy, yet when prayer ascends to him, he stops his program and gets hold of a prayer of a person that has faith in him. You know, sometimes it's good to be a pastor. When you are a pastor, you don't put appointments, you just arrive in people's homes. <laughs> There was a time when I went to the municipal mayor. The mayor was an Adventist. I got there in my suit, powerful suit in the name of Jesus. You can see Adventist pastors are wearing powerful suits. I went in there and, and I got there. I put my hands on my pocket. I said, can I see the mayor? Then they asked me. This brother looked at me. Then he said, who are you? Then I said, tell the mayor that his pastor is allowed. Then they said, oh, sir, do you have an appointment? I said, no, I don't have an appointment, but he knows where I am. Then I stood there and made a call and said, sir, at, at first when, he, when she answered, she had an attitude. But immediately when, when the man said, oh, I love the pastor to go ahead. And you see, it was so good because many people were there standing. Only thing that I asked was to say to them, excuse me, I need to pass. Excuse me, sir, I need to pass. Simply because the man knew who I am. I want you to know that wherever you are sitting, God knows who you are. You see, when you call on Jesus, Jesus makes sure that he answers our prayers. Now, this man, this woman comes from a region of Thai and Sidon. She comes to Jesus and she says, Oh Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, re remember that the Jews did not believe the messianship of Jesus. But in this woman who was not even from Israel, she had a revelation of who she was talking about when she said, Jesus, son of David, this woman was acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah, What those who are going to church did not know who he was. I want to challenge you this morning that is it possible that you can be going to church, reading the word of God, but not knowing who Jesus is to you? Some of us, we go to church, we sit in church, we read in church, we go to all the programs of the church, but we do not know Jesus for ourselves. But this woman, when the Pharisees could not believe, she says, oh Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus 
The disciples said to Jesus, Jesus said, man, send her away. The reason why the disciples said to Jesus, send her away. Remember, it is Jesus who gave them an instruction not to heal the Gentiles, but the first person that comes to them is a Gentile. So they said to Jesus, send her away. Then Jesus says to her, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Then she says to Jesus, yes, master, even dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Let me qualify this and say to you, the same ingredient that is found in the bread is the same ingredient that is found in the crumbs. Little is much when it is in the hand of God. You see, you don't need much, but that which God gives is enough to sustain us and to see us through. Now, I normally tell people, some people, when I came to Solusi, they thought that I was a cheese boy, you know, I don't know, okay, in, in, in Zimbabwe, they don't call them cheese boys, they call them salad, you know, the salad boys. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or you know what we call them, they call them bourgeoisie, I'm a bourgeois, or cheese boys, yeah. Now, I was not a cheese boy, I was a Soweto boy. When these other guys are eating cheese, I was eating peanut butter, no way. <laughs> so some people thought that maybe, bruh, you've got money. When I went to school, I did not have money. I did not have a sponsor. I finished school without a sponsor. I remember one instance when I was supposed to come back to school. My mom is not working. My father just left us. I was raised by my grandparents with, my, with the help of my mother, of course, in the, absent of, in the absence of my father. Now, I remember one day when I was doing my last semester, and I owed Solusi close to 17,000 rents, and I did not have money, I did not know where it will come from. I remember praying to the Lord and saying, God, you know I don't have a sponsor. <coughs> and if you really called me, I want you to give me money before the week ends. If the money does not come, I would not even waste my time to be this thing called a pastor. Actually, when I received a call, I believe that I received a call. I did not want to be a pastor. But if you have called me, you will provide. You have seen me from first year up until now. Please not provide. One day I was preaching in one area. It is on Sabbath evening, Sunday morning. I'm supposed to go back to Zimbabwe. I have not received money. Monday, Tuesday comes, Wednesday, Thursday, the money has not come. Friday, the money has not come. And I did not pack my bags because I was serious. I wanted to tell the Lord that I wanted to show Jesus that Jesus, I am not man of man business. I am from here. <laughs> I am from here. I am not going to school. If you are not going to provide, I am not going to school. You are the one that called me. By the way, Jesus, when you called me, 2008, people were running away from Zimbabwe. I was going to Zimbabwe. But now, how can you ever ask me after years in Zimbabwe, when the last semester is going to come, you do not pitch. Then I sat there, and my mom said, I am not packing the bags. I asked her, how am I packing my bags without money? Then a one pastor friend of mine, Pastor Zoli, came and said, no man, Jesus will provide. And I said to him, yeah, brother. When we go to Solusi, we don't go to Solusi with our hearts like people here. I saw some of them when they when, when the dishes were passing, they were giving their hearts. You do not go to school with a heart, you go to school with money. <laughs> and the time came by, Sabbath evening, I did a verse for them. A couple comes to me and says, Pastor, we have been looking for you for a long time. Where have you been? Then I asked them, where have you been also? <laughs> then when they came to me, I don't know these people. It is my first time seeing them since the creation of the world. <laughs> I have never seen them anywhere. In they fact, from the door and went back in at this dog, the bulldog, isn't it? And when that one did that, a whole lot of dogs came. What is this gentleman have for me? You know, when you do not have money, you become a rude guy. You become very rude because you get so frustrated. Then I went with them. They said, we want to give you money for school. Then they kept quiet. Then I said, go ahead. Then they spoke that we have agreed with my wife to give you 17,000. Then I said, yeah. What? <laughs> they said 17,000. How much? Did I say I was owing Solusi? 
17,003. I did not tell these brothers. I did not tell this couple that I owe 17,000. They simply wrote a check and they gave me. You know, when you pray and you want things and God answers, he would embarrass you with, with, with blessings. You see, when David says, even though I walk in the veil of the shed of death, I shall fear no evil. You see, when my God blesses you, he does not bless you in private. He blesses you in public so that the devil will know that there is a God who has an ability to do what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. You see, when he did, that he embarrassed me, and I stopped believing. Then I thought that maybe this check is a fake check. I took it doubting. Then I said, I'm not going on Sunday, I'm going on Monday, because I wanted to go to the bank. When I went to the bank and they gave me all the money, then I said, therefore, our Lord is still able. Amen. Now, if I tell you today, Pastor, have you met those people again? I will tell you, even today, in the name of Jesus, I have never met those guys again. <laughs> and I do, not, I do not want, I'm a theologian. I don't believe much in superstition. I want to prove an evidence. I, I, do not tell, I do not want to tell you that they were angels. No, they were not angels because that man had a hand. I held his hand and he walked with me, is it? I would not say to you, I met angels, but one thing that I know is that when God when I needed God, he came through and he pitched through for me. Hence today, I am standing here as an evidence that if you do not believe in Jesus, at least try the will of God, a God that is precise, a God that is not late, a God that is always on time. What is impossible with man, with the God is possible. The Bible says, Jesus did not need to be in the same room with this, with the daughter of this lady. Now, now, if you read the New Testament, the Bible says here in the translation, in English translation, it says this, 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 the daughter of this lady was severely demon possessed. But it is not the term that is used in the Greek language. Then, when you read, it is the word "kakos," meaning that the illness was a result of an evil spirit. There are times some of us are having illnesses that are not only a medical illnesses, there are illnesses that are caused by the powers of darkness. Some of us here, we are having things in our homes that are troubling us, not because of ourselves, but because someone in the past, in your family, did something with someone and made a deal with someone and those things come and give us a problem. Some problems that we have today, they do not need practical solutions, but for the solutions to come, they need a spiritual solution. And Jesus simply says, oh great is your faith. Woman, let it be to you as you wish. And the Bible says, immediately the daughter was healed. Immediately. The Bible does not say afterwards. The Bible does not say 10 minutes after that. But the Bible says immediately this daughter of this lady was delivered from the sickness that she had. I do not want, I do not know this morning what you are going through. But I know a Jesus that I have believed in. I know a Jesus that can set and change our circumstances. Before I finish, let me tell you another testimony. It happened one day, some of the pastors would know my friend. There is a friend of mine that I'm very close to. Now, if you see us working together, you will think he's my brother. But you just from South Africa and we met in Zimbabwe. He's from KZN called Pastor Zoni. I'm a loud person by nature. When I laugh, I laugh loud. When I speak, I speak loud. But the man well, is always in the softer side of things. One day it happened that I had all the fees. You know, when you have all the fees, you, you think that you are bigger than everyone else. <laughs> so he did not have fees. Then we meet at the park station in Johannesburg, where we are, were boarding buses to Zimbabwe. Then he asked me a question. He says, I asked him a question. I said to him, hey, brother, I have all the money because I was now breaking. I've got all the money for fees. Then he says to me, brother, I only have money for the bus to take me to Zimbabwe. Then I asked him, brah, who is going to pay for 
your fees. <laughs> then he says to me, ah, the Lord that has called me shall provide. Then I laughed, because I always laugh. I laughed and I said to him, you know, brother, when Jesus carried the cross, he carried his cross alone. So today, this week in Solusi, you will be having the experience, the Calvary experience, going to an old man called Muniwa there, who would be wanting his money in the name of Jesus. Then we got into the bus. Then we, we stopped in another area. Then he said to me, Mamelo, are you called? Then I said to him, are you doubting your calling? So you wanted to affirm your calling using me. <laughs> then he says, no, I want you to go and pray at the ATM. Then I said, ah, pray at the ATM. He said, yes, we go to the ATM. I was so shy because we are blocking a queue behind us, isn't it? Then I prayed, and I prayed a very theological prayer. Oh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we have Zoji to go back home and work and see work so that we have money for school in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> then he took his cart, placed his cart into, put his cart into the ATM, put the pin, the account was still zero, zero. Then I said to him, you think God is still showering people with money like in the past? This is not in the past. This is now, brother. You work, you go to school, you sleep, no school, brother. Then we continued. Again, the same thing happened. This time he said, you are not going to pray. I am the one who is going to pray. Then I said, hallelujah, God bless you. <laughs> we get into the, into the, into the, into the, into the, another ATL. The brother puts his heart and he prays a simple prayer. I know, Lord, that you can. I can't, but you can. Amen. Then I said, I want to see this. <laughs> then he, he put his cart there. Voila. Lo and behold, there was money in the account. Then he looked at me. Then I said, no, maybe there's a mistake. I looked clearly. <laughs> and where am I going? Is that when we went back to South Africa home, at the bank, even today, they do not know the person who deposited the money for the past. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think your God has failed you, if you think your God has failed you, I know of a God that is able. Whatever you are going through this morning, I am here to assure you that our God is still in control. You know, some Zimbabwean, some people when they look at me, they say, you are talking about a God that is able. Yes, I talk about a God that is able because in 28, I was here with you not having food. At the times, I would exchange food, exchange places that I would visit looking for food. At some point, I just appeared in Naniwa's house looking for food because I did not have. I want you to know that the same God who saw us through those tough situations then, do you think he cannot see you through now? It is Ellen White who writes that we do not have anything to fear for the future unless we have forgotten how the Lord has led us in the past. It is when we look back that we realize that the God that we serve is a reliable God, a God that we can trust, a God that we can rely on. Let me finish. I'm finished. Before I make a call. One day I was invited in a place called Chisipiti. Do you know Chisipiti? Do you know Chisipiti? Yeah. Not Chisipiti. Chisipiti. In town somewhere in Alar. Now, as I was there, I was in another big house of a, of a cheese boy from Solus who was my friend. Hey. Then this brother said to me one day, Pastor, I want to see, I want to show you a house of the then, then vice president of Zimbabwe. You, you don't remember her name? Then I said, yeah, I want to go there. And I went there. And lo and behold, when I was going there, I noticed that some people who have money, they are not like us from Soweto and Mare and Chicken Wizard. When we see our dogs, we want to kick them and throw stones at them, isn't it? <laughs> Those guys would go pulling their dogs with a chain and take a walk with the dog with the chain, is in it? And I saw something very interesting that I will never forget. One day I saw this guy walking with this dog, a bulldog. Do you know a bulldog? 
Now, a bulldog does not walk like an other ordinary dog, is it? Other dogs, they just walk fast. But a bulldog is a big dog, it's like this. And when it walks, <laughs> it walks very slow, isn't it? And I saw an interesting thing that there are those small dogs that when they see other dogs, they will start barking. And I saw a, a very powerful scene. One of the small dogs came underneath a fence from the home and went barking at this dog, the bulldog, isn't it? And when that one did that, a whole lot of dogs came. As they came, they barked at the bulldog. Now, when the bulldog is being barked at, it is not intimidated by the barking of the little dogs. It simply continues to walk. <laughs> when they continue to bark, instead of the bulldog changing its direction, it, com it continues to do what? <laughs> and I want us to know that when we come to Jesus, we get that attitude. When the devil throws stones at us, we need a bulldog attitude. When we are faced with unemployment, we need an attitude that will set us above the rest. And that attitude is found in none other than Prince Emmanuel, Jesus himself. I want to make a call this morning. As I make a call, I invite my friends to come and sing. They know themselves. I want to invite my friends to come and sing. I want to make a call today, this morning. A call is a call that is simple. There are two calls that are simple. One is a call that says, maybe I have doubted my God. Maybe things have not been going well in my life. And at some point I felt that I cannot rely on God. But this morning your faith is renewed in knowing that God can still do for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Two, I want to call on someone that says, Pastor, yesterday, even this morning, all the calls have been made for those who want to give their lives to Jesus, those who want to commit themselves to Jesus. And you are saying, I am part of those who want to be baptized. Please come, stand up, do not be afraid. Jesus is here this morning. He is in a business of saving people. May the Lord bless you as our brother sing for us. Amen. If you are there, you want to be baptized, you want to give yourself to Jesus. 
We are giving you an opportunity this morning to come forward to Jesus. He is here this morning to, to help us to stand and stand for him. Then you are sitting here and you are contemplating, please. Jesus is calling. Come forward as we pray with you. that will be baptized on Sabbath as we close our eyes you can simply stand up and come forward as well and I want to pray with those that says pastor we have been facing tough times and hard times but today our faith has been restored and our confidence in God is being renewed if you are there stand up with us as we pray Let us pray. Jesus, they made a decision, a decision of coming not to anyone but to Jesus. We are grateful for these opportunities that you give to us. Opportunities of coming and sitting at the feet of Jesus 
and be given opportunities to at least make amends and make our ways right so that we might be saved. We are well aware that you are coming very soon. And if we are not uniting our lives with you, Prince Imani, we know that there is no future for us. But today, your children have stood up, others for baptism and others, Lord, to say our faith, Lord, is renewed. We pray that, Lord, may you hold us in the right hand of your, of your will so that we might be able to stand the machinations and the wiles of the evil one. Speak to us even this whole week. There are just only three days that are left for us to go back home. Tomorrow is not promised to us. We do not know whether next year around this time we will be here. Therefore, Lord, we pray that we will teach us to number our days so that we can apply our minds to wisdom. Bless this camp and bless the leadership that have organized this powerful location. We pray that all of us, Lord, when we leave this place, we can be able to say it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. We pray that you write all of us our names in the book of life. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Jordan.